This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Check out my free material pack to help you texture this scene. Today we're going to be walking through how I made this manatee scene. I was inspired to make this after actually going on a swimming with manatee excursion where I had a lot of fun. Heads up, this is not a beginner tutorial. I will not be showing you every single little step, but I will be walking you through the entire process of how I created it. So first up, I just imported some reference images that I drew. I'll put a link to those in the description below where you can download those. I just have a front and side reference and I turned down the opacity. After that, I went ahead and added a round cube sphere, which you can get from the extra objects add-on, which is included for free. I just scaled that up in my side view. And then what I did next is I tabbed into edit mode here, grabbed half of that circle and just kind of moved that down and scaled it to the base of the body. And then after that, I just added some edge loops to kind of accommodate and shape the body to what I needed. Now I'm just showing a little bit of the process here. I spent a lot of time kind of going back and forth and kind of getting the perfect shape here. So just spend some time here, kind of just massaging it into place until you're happy with the overall shape. If your computer can handle it, I definitely recommend adding a subdivision here. I went ahead and added a subdivision two modifier to this just to give it a smoother look overall. After that, I tabbed into front view here and wanted to match my front view a bit more. So I just tabbed into edit mode here and just took the top and scaled that in a bit. And you can see I'm using the proportional editing and that just kind of adjusts the overall shape of the piece, giving me a little bit more of a gradual fade off. Wanted to save a little bit of time, so I tabbed back into edit mode here and decided just to delete half of the model. And that way I could go ahead and apply a mirror modifier and just make sure that you have that above your subdivision so that you don't get a weird little crease. Next up, I was gonna go ahead and create the eyes. So I start with a round sphere again. I'm just gonna move that off to the side. Then what I do is I'm just gonna scale that in and kind of give it kind of a flat shape there and then tab into the front view here. And then I'm just gonna duplicate that sphere and move that onto the surface and do it twice. And that's to create kind of a little eye highlight look. Now this is by no means the traditional or the right way to create an eye. This is something that I do kind of stylistically to get more of a toy look on my characters, which is kind of part of what I like to do in my renders. After that, I'm gonna go ahead and move the eye into place onto kind of the front view there. So I just scaled the eye down, just moved it in and just kind of rotated it to get it to kind of match the shape of the object. And then I'm gonna go ahead and apply a mirror modifier to this eye as well to save on kind of time there. Or you can just hit Control J and join it to the body of your kind of little manatee character if you want as well. Next up, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and add their little snout here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add another round cube using that add-on and I'm going to give that a lower um, subdivision count and then I'm going to apply a subdivision modifier that way I don't have as many vertices and things to work with. I'm just going to scale that in in the side view until I get it about the shape I want and then I'm going to go ahead and just kind of massage that into place. So you can go ahead and use the sculpt grab tool here or you can do like I do and I just kind of scale in and out some of the vertices in different areas. Go ahead and make sure you're happy with the shape before moving on. I went ahead and cut my snout in half and just joined it so that it could work with the mirror modifier. And next up, what we're going to do is work on the flippers, which is a cool technique. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a plane here. Then what I'm gonna do is rotate that plane 90 degrees so that it's facing us in the front view, just a little easier to work with. And then what I'm going to do is add some modifiers to it and reshape it. So first what I'll do is I'll tab into edit mode here and I'm gonna scale the top down to give us more of kind of a triangular shape or a trapezoid. And then what I'm going to do is go ahead and add two modifiers, a subdivision modifier and a solidify modifier. Now you want the solidify modifier on top and the subdivision modifier on bottom. And then you can play with a couple settings here. I use the offset so that it's kind of centered on the little origin point. And then I go ahead and play with the edge data and the edge creases and just give that a tiny bit so that it helps hold some of that shape a bit more. And then I kind of crank up the thickness a tiny bit and that gives us a little flipper shape. And then you can move that down onto the origin point and use that origin point to rotate it. So I'm just gonna move that into the side view and just kind of place that on the side of the object here. Now, keeping that little origin point at the tip of the flipper up there is important because we're gonna use that later when we animate our flippers to make that an easier process. So next up, I'm going to apply a mirror modifier to it and then I'll only have to animate one flipper later and that'll make that a bit easier to work with. But you'll notice that it won't necessarily work right away, so I'm going to actually use the body as my origin since that's on the center point already. And then that way I can keep the origin point on my flipper 
so that I can just rotate the flipper and make that easy. Now I'm gonna work on the back tail fin next. So what I'm gonna do is actually duplicate one of my flippers and tab in the edit mode, and they're just gonna reshape that. Now their back tail fins are just a lot kind of fatter and wider. So I'm just gonna kind of move that to the back and just play with the adjustments and scale that into place. And I'm also gonna scale the top bit as well so they can add a little bit of thickness there and leave the origin point at the top yet again so that later when we go to animate, that'll make it a bit easier. For a character this simple, I didn't feel it needed an official armature and rig as that just kind of overcomplicates it, takes longer and renders longer. So I just parented the fins to the body of the character. And then because I left those origins at the top, we'll be able to kind of animate those fins flapping as we move the character around the scene. Now what I did do is I moved the manatee up here because I wanted to move in a circular motion. I'm gonna go ahead and add an empty to the center of the scene. And then what we can do is parent the body of our character to that empty, keeping the offset, and then we can go ahead and rotate that so that we can move them around the scene. Depending on what view you're in, this may change the axis, but for my scene, it's the Y rotation. Go ahead and insert two keyframes on your empty on the Y rotation, and you can create one at the beginning at zero and one at the end of 360 degrees. You can just enter those in the little transform panel up there and insert a keyframe there. And then go ahead and take that last keyframe and insert it one frame after however long you want your rotation to be, and that'll help it give it a smoother rotation. Now to add more interest, we'll make our character rotate and we'll do the same exact thing on the Y rotation of our character. And because our character has their own origin separate from the empty, they'll be able to kind of rotate around as they move around the screen. And that just will add a little bit more motion and delight. If you're not aware, you can just right click and insert single keyframes on that little axis up there in the transform panel. I do that rather than inserting keyframes on all of them. That way it makes it easier to adjust in the graph editor layer if I only have a couple graph lines to look at as opposed to having six or nine graphs. One cool thing I don't think many people know about is you go to the graph editor, you can actually select your keyframes. And if you hit shift E, it'll pop up with a little menu and you can do make cyclic. And then what that'll do is make it just loop infinitely. And then you can take those keyframes and then you can offset them so that it gives you a little bit more visual variety. So here I've offset the Y axis of the body with the Y axis of the empty that are rotating. And it just gives it a more interesting motion if they're kind of slightly out of sync. Next up, let's add some motion to the flippers. It depends on the rotation in your scene, but for me, it's the X axis. So I'm just gonna insert a keyframe on that X axis and then just kind of bring them in and out as the little manatee circles around the screen. You can play with this and do whatever you think looks best for you. And then at the end, feel free to use that make cyclic trick that I mentioned before. And then you can kind of shift the timing of the flippers until it works best. And then just doing the same exact thing for the flipper on the back of the manatee and giving that just a little bit of motion as it kind of rotates around the screen just to add a bit more character and life more manatees to your scene, go ahead and grab the manatee and the empty and duplicate both of those. And then you can grab the empty and grab the keyframes over in the graph. And then you can just shift those keyframes of the empty access until you get it where you want placement wise in the scene. So for me, I just did these two manatees and just had them opposite of one another. A bit about our sponsor. Skillshare is a great place to learn in 2022. It's where I got started learning design fundamentals. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of incredible classes for creators. Explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. They have classes on Blender, character design, productivity, cinematography, illustration, business, and more. I'm a top teacher on the platform, and I host several Blender courses focused on characters and Blender. It's a great place to start learning Blender as I really focus on kind of the basics in these courses and trying to help level up. In my Your First 3D Animation class, I'll walk you through the process of animating your first 3D character. We'll cover the dope sheet, graph editor, and include free character rigs. This class focuses on the basics and it's made for beginners to Blender. It's curated specifically for learning and there are no ads. The first 1,000 people to use this link will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. You're gonna need a color scheme with at least five colors for your underwater scene. I chose this blue palette from Adobe Color Themes. Go check out that website if you're having trouble coming up with your own. Go through this rock process because it's really easy. If you have the extra objects add-on enabled, 
you have a rock generator option and you just hit that and generate a rock, it'll give you a random rock each time. So then all I'm doing is just taking around those rocks and just scaling around and just kind of rotating them and scaling them and just making a ring around the screen. Just hit shift D and just keep duplicating those until you're happy with the look. And then what you're going to do is select all those rocks, hit control J, join them into one object and then take that ring and duplicate it and move it back and rotate it a couple times. And you're gonna do this at least four times because we're gonna have one for those first four colors in whatever color palette you've chosen. Next up, we're gonna go ahead, grab a plane, add it, scale it up and move it to the back. That'll be our fifth color on the palette. And we're gonna go ahead and add materials to all of them. For the plane, we're gonna use an emission shader and choose that last color, the brightest color. And then we're going to crank up the emission so that we can get some light into our scene from behind. So do that until you have a good amount of lighting. And for the rest of the rocks, just use a default principle shader and play with the roughness value until you're happy with the way that it looks. And color pick those four colors, starting with the darkest and moving to the brightest as you move back further in the scene with your rings. Play with the lighting until you get something you're happy with. For me, I put an area plane in the front here and just gave it a blue color and cranked up the brightness until I was happy. And then you can go ahead and add an HDRI into the scene. I was browsing around and I decided to choose a sunset HDRI from Polyhaven, which offers free HDRIs. And that sunset kind of gave it a warm purplish blue color, which I felt matched an underwater look. So I recommend something like that. Up, let's work on compositing. We're going to make sure we have the miss pass enabled in the render tabs on the right tab. And then what we're going to do is go into our compositor and we're going to add a mix node. And then what you can do is plug your image into the top of that mix node, your mist into the factor, and then for the bottom, choose a color. So kind of an underwater blue color. And you can put a color lamp in between the mist pass and the factor and adjust that to adjust the strength of kind of that underwatered, washed out, misty look. Now this next step is optional and may not render on all computers, but I went ahead and added a box with volumetrics. And then for my factor, I just plugged in a bunch of noise into those volumetrics and stretched it out. So it kind of looked like light streaks. Let me know if you want to see a tutorial on how to do that. And then one more step is you can go ahead and download some free stock footage of dust and add that in the compositor. Just use the mix node and add a multiply node. And that'll give you kind of an underwater floating debris look, which can help add a lot of realism to that underwater look. The seaweed is pretty simple. We're gonna add another plane, make it kind of skinny, and then do the same thing as the flippers, add a solidify and a subdivision. And we'll move that plane up so the origin points at the bottom and then add a wave modifier. And what that wave modifier will do is gonna give Give it this little wiggle you can play with the wave strength and settings until you get a wiggle you're happy with then what we're going to do is we're going to take that first row of rocks and apply a hair particle system to it i recommend only doing the first row as that'll make your scene render quicker and doing the background rows won't show as much anyways so we're going to go ahead and apply a particle system to that first row. And then what we can do is choose the object as our render object and adjust the kind of settings until we get an amount of vegetation we're happy with. So what I'm going to do is choose the grass here to render and you'll see it populates the scene. And then what I'm going to do is quickly add some children and then add a little bit of roughness to the grass and boom, you can see we have that. I'm going to go ahead, add the same materials, the dark blue rocks and adjust the size there a bit until I'm happy with the overall look do have a full tutorial on hair particle systems, so check that out if you're struggling to do this part. Next up, we'll work on the bubbles. So we can just take a grease pencil object in the circle tool and draw a couple little circles here to give ourselves a bubble, and then we'll add a white material to it. And now we have a bubble object that will look kind of fun in our scene. Then we can grab the body of our character and add a basic particle system, but we want our bubbles to float upwards, which is not happening by default. So what we'll do is we'll come up to the gravity tab here. We'll take that gravity, we'll flip that negative so that it floats upwards and you can adjust the strength of that. And then we'll come back to the particle tab and lower the amount of particles so that they barely kind of float out because we only want a couple breathing bubbles. Then what we can do is take that grease pencil object and choose it as the render object. And then we will have bubbles floating up in our scene. Play with the rotation if it's not facing the correct direction. I personally use Substance Painter for texturing, so I'm just gonna fast forward. Most of you are here for Blender, but if you wanna know how to do this in Blender, I have a YouTube tutorial on how to texture paint to get you started. That'll show you everything you need to know. And then I also have a course on Skillshare as well that deep dives into texturing if you're interested in going a little bit deeper. 
And that's that, we're ready to render out our image and we have a full little underwater scene. As usual, thank you for watching and follow me at Southern Shoddy on Instagram or Twitter if you'd like to keep up to date.